Welcome to Sash Daily Podcast. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. We're uh, blessed enough to have the uh, amazing duo at Here to True Bubblegum. Dirty Dan and Goose, how are you guys doing tonight? Greetings. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I am all out of fucking bubblegum. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? I'm, I'm doing great tonight, Seth. Thanks for yes, having us on. We are doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, man. And uh, we had a very good friend of your guys and a friend of the podcast on yesterday, Eli, man. That was a hell of an interview as well. Oh. And I know this is going to be a hell of an interview as well, man. And uh, – Speaking of interviews, <laughs> what is uh, your guys' favorite interview that you guys have gone, done so far? You want to go first, Dirty Dan, or do you want me to go first? You can go first because I kind of have two different answers for that one. Okay. I do too. And uh, somebody that isn't a part of the podcast, you know, of in Eastern Kentucky. Or doesn't have a podcast. My favorite interview so far with that person is DJ Nikki. Just to get a representative from Ingersoll Lockwood to actually contact us back. And you can go back and listen to that show. And it's broke up in two parts. Uh, the entire interview was like 55 minutes. And at some point, we may post the entire thing. As one piece. Yeah, as, as, as one piece. Um, he, he's, he's my favorite so far. Everybody that's been on the show, Eli, uh, the spooky family, you love them all. Uh, there's something about Justin Perkins. I mean, <laughs> I mean honestly, you know, and, and, and I have described Justin as he could talk about a pile of trash and make it interesting because I mean, you know, to me, when you listen to this podcast, you learn something and you walk away with something. And, I, and I've told, uh, I, I think it was Beagle at the Pipeville Comic Con that Justin <laughs> was like an old man sitting on the front porch, peeling an apple or, or whittling a stick. You know, you listen when he speaks. Those, yeah. Those are mine. Yeah. What about you? Um, so, uh, I am I am with him uh, pretty much 100%. Uh, the favorite one I've gotten interview was DJ. DJ is such a smart, smart guy. And with everything he's got accomplished and is doing, very, very humble. <coughs> you know, he talks, he, he talked with us just like, you know, we were, we've, we've been comrades all along. Um, very down to earth, very humble, very intelligent, and so full of knowledge and experience. Um, so that was, God, I was I was so tired after doing that interview just because all the attention I like unintentionally diverted to it because everything that he said was just so intriguing. Um, but then the favorite interview I've heard before I came to the show is actually I think it was episode 30 or 31 when it was a um, I don't know. If, I think it was a roundtable. Um, Justin Perkins was on. Uh, Elliot was there. And God bless Justin Perkins is, <laughs> like you said, just fascinating. Uh, by all means, fascinating uh, to listen to, to talk with. Um, and, and he and I have a very similar background with some of the people and organizations we have to deal with. So <laughs> it's just it, it's like a personal level on that. It's just it's awesome to finally meet him, know him. Um, and that was probably one of my, my favorite episodes was uh, I think it was 31. Absolutely, man. And uh, I'm surprised we didn't get Beagle, man. <laughs> Beagle, Beagle is, is a great guy. You Absolutely. Know, and, and my hat's off to Beagle. I mean, at Pipe Comic Con, One of the he, funniest he definitely people. kept me out. You know, he's, he's, he's hilarious. You know, he is. He is hilarious. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm very thankful for all the guests that we've had on. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and it seems like everybody that's on, it goes to UFOs. And, I mean, I, I love UFOs. And, you know, um, we do try to talk about other stuff. Um, one thing that me and Dirty Dan both like is buried treasure. And yes. I, I have done several stories of buried treasure. 
buried treasure in Kentucky, buried treasure. It might have been in Pennsylvania where the family went and uh, they tried to get Springfield, Pennsylvania. I know exactly what you're talking they about. They tried to get a permit. They explained to the government officials why they wanted a permit. They had strong evidence that there was, I think it was Civil War go, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. or, or, I mean, it, tons of it. Yeah. They got, uh, they, and, and they got turned down, and then the FBI Re goes. Revolutionary, Revolutionary War. Yeah. And then the FBI goes and digs it up and recovers it. And that ended up in a lawsuit. You Springfield, know, uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And I actually have reached out to those guys. I've never got a response. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's well, insane, you, man. Goose, do you want Dirty Dan to email him like I did on your song? I couldn't just, you know, 26 emails in like four days, like a bad high school girlfriend. I'll do that. <laughs> just give me their email. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know that you have uh, also didn't get a uh, response from CSX as well, man. No, no. We got <laughs> however, from however, I have a buddy that I'm working on with getting him to get info and, and come on the show with us, who was actually, he's worked for CSX for like 14 years. Wow. Um, so yeah, I, I'm the guy that knows guys. I, I got the people <laughs> I call people. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that because he knows a little bit about the Paintsville incident. Um, but he said he's got the channels to do to, to be able to get more info for us. He's just got to do it the right way. So I said, you want to do it? I'll check in with you every once in a while, Preston, and we'll go from there. Oh, you actually told his name. Thank you very much, Preston. We look forward to that. Well, I said his I said his first name only before, and you called me out on the podcast for that. I'm like, I'm not saying his last name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely not, man, because uh, you don't want the uh, man in black showing up. Yeah. Right. Bring him on. Bring on a man in black. I've already got an affiliation, so I'm I'm good. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've, uh, the man in black have showed up before? Yeah, well, I, I used to live next to a very, very high up special or long time special agent in the FBI. Um, he's still my parents' neighbor, but uh, I used to bounce at a biker bar. And then I worked with a couple of them. So I, I got tagged as like being part of him and I, I, I never prospected or nothing. So I'm, I'm good. <clears throat> I don't need to do that. <laughs> Yeah, man, looking back at the uh, Man in Black stories in uh, uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia and stuff, definitely is a uh, very interesting stories, man. And uh, some people actually think they're not government officials and they're actually aliens. I don't know. Enough. <laughs> I don't know. If, if, if they do exist, they're beyond government officials. Yeah. I mean, they might be government officials, but they're, they're, definitely not related to our normal everyday government um no, no. i i can i can attest that some several of them at least are not anything but human very very cold jackass humans um <laughs> but <laughs> other than that yeah it's there i i get that like super secret private security firm kind of vibe from them like the guys that like make like ten thousand dollars a day on whatever mission they're doing um because they definitely move like that. They definitely talk like that. They don't give a shit what you have to say. So, you know, it's... Uh... What about you, Seth? Do you think disclosure will happen anytime soon? Uh, disclosure of UFO information? Yes. Uh, No, man. Not three years, five years from now? No, nah, I don't expect He's with me. He's with me. Soon, man. <laughs> I think something's going to have to happen because I think we're at, we're at a turning point where something's got to give. You know, you can only uh, hold pressure on a wound so long before it just, you know. Explodes. Like I said on the, the, the round table, well, which, which will, that I believe that part of the episode will be coming out this Sunday, mm -hmm. um, it is not going to happen until something smacks it in the, everything in the face, and it has to. Oh, <laughs> they're uh they're not so gonna sorry. release it because we uh we seen what they released with this uh last the class the uh, classified information they they yeah, everything's redacted anything yeah but you know they th that's baby steps you know like baby the movie steps, about yeah. Bob I yeah. am surprised that they even released that to be honest uh, that that was a baby step. <laughs> 
So, you know, you have to start somewhere. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm very blessed and thankful for all of our listeners, for Dirty Dan, for, you know, I mean, because I started this last October. You started your show last October as well. And, I mean, it has just exploded and just took off uh, beyond belief. And uh, I'm I'm very grateful for that, very thankful for that. Here's an example of the next UFO report. Oh, look, I'll redact (laughs) this. But, yeah, man, I uh, definitely want to thank everybody that has uh, subscribed to my podcast and that's even listened. Who's your favorite interview, Seth? Oh, wow, man. That is a uh... – <laughs> Let's like turn the Eli. tables here. Yeah, just like Eli uh, said yesterday, man, that is a tough question. Man, I, I would have to say my go work for sure. <laughs> How come? <laughs> what made it your favorite? Because, uh, man, honestly, he, uh, him and uh, Joe Rogan got me into podcasting. Listening to them as a 10-year-old kid on the UFC and stuff and listening to Joe Rogan on his podcast and stuff. They're definitely the uh, two two people I looked up to the most. I mean, I mean, I look up to Goose as well. I look up to Goose, Eli, and you. And, I mean, it's the, uh, the older people that have done it longer than I have. That's what I look up to the most, man, because if, if not for Ghost and you, if not for Justin Perkins, if not for Eli, if not for uh, Mountain Mysteries, if not for – I don't want to leave nobody off. If not for Down the Holler. The spooky Family. Spooky Family, the Paranormal Trucker. If not for everybody that has uh, put in the work and there wouldn't be me and my pot work. I don't know why people want to be against each other. All our all us podcasters need to be together, man, because uh here nation in Kentucky or just in Kentucky in general, man, we got enough people against us. Definitely, definitely. You know, and the <clears throat> I'm sorry the, about the politician speech. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, you're <laughs> there, you know, and you had a good point, you know. I mean, I was raised to help people and I love the area I'm from, you know. And, you know, because I grew up and was born in the same county that you live in, you know, Knott County. Uh, I was born in Hyman. Uh, I spent most of my life in Knott County until high school, and I actually had to move to Pike County to go to Belfry High School because I was a mean little shit. And uh, <laughs> You still are, buddy. <laughs> thanks, thanks. That little man syndrome. <laughs> and uh, even though I hated it at the time, you know, not necessarily – it made me grow up a lot because as we were talking before we started the interview, I actually started radio at age 14 and I worked from age 14 to 21 in radio until I got uh, a job at the cookie factory. And I've been there. I was, I was actually born where D not far from where DJ is now in Germany. And uh, I came over and I've lived all over the Eastern half of the country. Um, and then I, I spent most of my preteen and teenage years working on a dairy farm. So I only know what hard work is. And then I got my Eagle Scout. And have you ever milked a bull? <laughs> twice, one successfully, one unsuccessfully. I oh, still have a wow. battle scar from that. So it, I, wow. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Rocky Mountain Oysters. <laughs> uh, and uh, we, uh, you know, all, all we did was, was hard work. Now, there's guys from a football camp that didn't even last three, four days by the time they were all gone. And there I am just hucking hay bales onto a, onto a cart. And I set a new record. Not, not anything, you know, that was notable, but I put 322 bales on a cart. That was supposed to be a 220 max. So I'll stack hay all day. I don't care. Any, <laughs> anything else is just easy. Yeah, absolutely, man. Stacking hay is definitely uh, one of the hardest things. <laughs> it's not fun It'll at all. make a man out of you. I don't care what <laughs> yeah. sex you are. You will be a man when you are done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think podcasting is definitely uh, more comfortable for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, well, man, definitely. I, I fell in love with this because when I was in college for music, I had a radio show on Friday nights. Oh, that's and awesome, man. It went from a one-hour slot to two-hour slot very quick, and then it turned from 5 p.m. till. Was that in Kentucky? Two... No, I was in Pennsylvania. Oh, really? Where uh, are you at in Pennsylvania? So I went to college, the very northern tip of the state, so far north I could piss on New York. <laughs> if I like pissed out my dorm window, um, I say that lovingly if my wife watches this because she's from New York. Uh, <laughs> so is my mom actually. Um, but you know, I uh, I was right outside Philadelphia. I was like 30 30ish minutes, depending on what what vehicle I was driving from Maryland. 
And uh, so it was like almost five hours off to college for me and uh, had a, a radio station on the bowl there. And it quickly became a nine hour slot. I was literally all Friday night into when the bars let out Saturday wow. morning. Wow. And I loved it. And I left college to pursue my day job, uh, which is not cross-dressing anymore, Goose, I'm sorry. And <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I always wanted to get back into it, but then I had to move around, you know, life happens. And uh, I've always listened to podcasts and then I got presented this opportunity and I hopped right on board and I thought I pissed him off or offended him right away just because uh -huh. my wife and him had a surprise plan for me. And uh, I was like, oh, this is not going to be good if this way it's going to start, but you know, here we are. That was classic too. That was, that was <laughs> <laughs> what happened exactly? Yeah, you can go ahead and tell him that story. So, um, I uh, I got I, I got a message that said, "Hey, buddy, can you Facetime me quick?" I'm like, "Yeah, hang on." So I walked out for him and Facetimed him, and he was like, he told me that Cronkite had left, and I'm like, "You know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that." And he goes, "Yeah, I'm, you know, I've been looking, thinking about a new co-host and." I'm like, well, who do you have in mind? And he goes, well, I'm looking at him. And then it didn't click at first because, like, I didn't know where he was or what room he was. Like, I didn't know who was in the room with him. And then he goes, what, what's, so, what's so confusing? I'm looking at him. I'm like, me? And he's like, yeah, you. And, like, fangirl moment happened again. Composed myself. And I'm like, I'd be honored. That'd be awesome. Thank you, thank you. And, like, you know, I'll definitely plan to come out there and plan to have you come up here. And he just got quiet. I'm like, fuck, did I, did I say something I wasn't supposed to already? Like, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And he just got real, real vague with everything. And then, uh, like a week and a half later, come to find out him and my wife, Rebecca, who is like, I don't know where she is on TikTok now, but on Twitch, it's honest Rebecca thoughts. Um, oh, it's, the same thing. it's the same thing on TikTok too. Oh, she right, has she's Twitch. Had, yeah. Um, she just started that because she kept getting banned from TikTok and she finally stepped up to my level. I got completely banned. I had to get a VPN because they, they blocked my IP address back in May. Wow. And I wasn't even prominent on there. Anyway, um, <laughs> come to find out because I didn't know what was going on. And she was like asking me to take off work and talk to my boss. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Where are we going? So she had me guessing and I thought we were going back to where we got married in Tennessee at. And I'm like, okay, well, you said it's this far away and that's this far away. So that's not it. I'm trying to figure it out. And she goes, we're going to Pikeville. And I'm like, goose. <laughs> She's like, everything's taken care of. My mom's coming out to watch Char, this, that, and the third. And then she told him that, that she had to tell me. And uh, he's like, that's why I was being so quiet about everything. I'm like, mother fucker, you had me scared <laughs> shitless. Yeah. <laughs> You, you thought you got fired before you got hired. Oh, I thought I got fired right after I got hired. <laughs> it was hilarious because he was really excited and he was going, yeah, I'll come up and you come down. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later on. And I'm like, and that was after like my five okay. minute, like, thank you. Welcome intro speech to him. I'm like, fuck, did I just blow this already? Like, what did I do? <sighs> come to find out that wife of mine and him, they were scheming on me. <laughs> yeah, and we actually had that in the work probably for probably for like five or six weeks before she even told you. So I had no idea. And then when we were there, um, the last day when we were heading out, that's when uh, DJ Nikki actually called us. We had just got done uh, recording with Eli, and we were on our way back to the hotel, and someone called the show line. He's like, oh, I'll just let it go to voicemail. So I'm sitting in the back seat. Rebecca and him are up front in his truck, and uh, – we get back to the hotel and I just get this text that says, make sure you come see me before you leave. You need to listen to this. And I'm like, oh, great. Here we go with the big shit again. <laughs> what? What? What did I do? Stop tearing up my heartstrings here, man. <laughs> and we go over and he plays us the voicemail. And this was this was honestly when I knew it was going to be a fun time because he goes, ah, oh, yes, my name is uh, Daryl or DJ Nikki, I'm, I'm calling for Goose and uh, what was the other guy's name? I wrote it down here. Ah, yeah, Dirty Dan. And then he just chuckled. And I'm like, yep, this, this is going to be a good time. <laughs> uh, backing up in that story just a little bit, and I hope Rebecca don't care for me sharing this. When we were on the way to the 
<laughs> to the inter- to the station. I know where you're going. <laughs> you know, well, and we we talked about it the day before. I'm like, hey, you know, and I told her like when she's coming down, I'm like, you know, we're gonna do so many shows uh, at Bunker Studios, and then you know, uh, on Monday before you leave, we're going to Eli Studio. We're going to do an interview with him. So. You know, simple, you know, because I'm like, hey, Eli's a podcaster too. You know, he works in radio. You know, our, our show was the, uh, it was, that was the first station that picked our show up. So one thing you got to know about Rebecca is she likes to be very, very organized because she's done a shit ton of research on everything. So <laughs> this girl thought it was a job interview. <laughs> and when we're driving there, <laughs> it comes out. I'm like, no, no, this is, this is a, this is a radio interview. He has a podcast, plus it's on TV. She's like, and she gives me the most evil look. And she's like, I thought this was a job interview. I'm like, why the hell would you be going to a job interview? I love her dearly, but damn, she is so pretty sometimes. <sighs> so, you know, I mean, and I, that, that cracked me up, you know. I mean, because honestly... I mean, and, and you even saw the text, Dirty Dan. I yep. thought I explained it good. You know, hey, he yeah. has a podcast. You know, it's a radio station. We're going there. We're going to do an interview. She thought she was going for a job interview. Wow. That, that yep. is a, that's a that's a hell of a story, man. And, uh, I mean, since you guys have uh, did the podcast and stuff, you can tell you guys are becoming uh, more comfortable with being on together and it, it takes a while to get chemistry yeah. and stuff. Absolutely, man. The people think podcasting is easy, but it's not easy, man. Well, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest when I say this and it's no offense to dirty Dan. I thought the level that we're at right now, it would be November or December just because we wouldn't in the same room, but we always, when we, when we do a radio show or the podcast show, we zoom, we FaceTime, you know, it, it's never a phone call because we've got that interaction going on. And I thought that may hinder us just a little bit for us to get our flow when we first started, but it's not. It, it's not been a problem at all. I mean, he puts up my ugly mug, and if he can get past that, we'll, we'll have a hell of a time. So, you know, it don't bother me, though. <laughs> Man, it's going to be uh, – and if you guys are looking for a good time, and uh, tomorrow night, Saturday night at uh, – this is a shameless plug. Nine to eleven PM. <laughs> uh, there is a uh, virtual Zoom concert that my podcast is only hosting with uh, Malcolm Johnson playing at nine to nine forty-five, and then we have the doctor, Doctor Richard Van Dam, talking from nine forty-five to ten. He's running for Congress in our area. And then from ten to eleven, we have Tony Sloan, who had the number one song in South Africa on the R and B charts on iTunes. Uh, headlining. And uh, just to tell everybody, if you're a first responder, you get a free ticket. And the Here to True Bubblegum podcast gets a free ticket. Well, well thank you well, very much. I was, a, I was actually a volunteer firefighter for a number of years, so I'll, uh, I'll just put that shameless plug out there. If you're looking for a comedy <laughs> shoot. <laughs> but yeah, man, we'll have a good time tomorrow night listening to some good music, man. It's going to be uh, th- hopefully last time the crowd was actually uh, 20 people. That was our first show. We had 20 people in here. That's good. And I heard you and you and Eli uh, talking about that on his on his interview. Great job. Great interview. Uh, you know, and uh, what was the name of the song that's number one in South Africa? Uh, last kiss, good night. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to check that out. He'll be playing that tomorrow night. Actually, he's gonna be having an hour set. Nobody, I won't be interrupting him. It's just an hour of him killing it. And it's it's a uh, 45 minutes of Malcolm Johnson killing it as well. Obviously, people can uh ask the uh, Dr. Richard Van Dam, who's running for Congress in the fifth district here. They're gonna be able to ask him questions for 15 minutes and. It doesn't even have to be about politics. It can be about uh, I don't I don't want to talk about it. the vaccine. You rather you get the vaccine or not? You can ask him if you want information uh, about the vaccine. If you want information about COVID, you can ask him about that. You said Tony Sloan. Yeah, I've already liked that song. 
<laughs> oh, really? It's a great song, brother. For sure. Yeah, he's, he he's, is a good he's friend. He's actually not County, isn't he? Yeah, so. he's a good friend of mine. So yeah, I'm a I am a uh semi professional and unprofessional at the same time musician as well. Uh so I I will literally listen to everything from Beethoven to Barbie Girl by Aqua. I don't care. Music's Absolutely. music. Absolutely, man. And uh definitely everybody should bring their family in and enjoy some good music, man. So oh yeah, man, I'll send you the Zoom link. I'll add you on Facebook tonight too, man. I'll send yeah. you the uh well you already got the Zoom link. That's the ticket right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I'll uh, have to message you his his profile or his real name on Facebook if you'll be able to find him. Because it's not Maximus Rigamortis. <laughs> Maximus, Maximus Rigus, because my nickname in college was Big Rig. So I just made it fancy <laughs> for Zoom because this is like a fancy thing. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I definitely suggest if you guys are going to get into podcasting, uh, for people that ain't podcasting yet, to uh, get the uh, Zoom license package. It's fifteen dollars a month. It's definitely you can have as you can have up to a hundred people in there as long as you want to. Well, we have we actually have because Rebecca hosts a couple uh, like five or six different Zooms classes a week, if you want to call it that, and then like a flocktail party Saturday nights. We have the like uh, two hundred dollar a year package. Wow, dude. I got yeah. the uh, because uh, my podcast. I mean, I'm my, I'm not making any. I do make a little bit of money off this, but I'm not making much. Let's just say that uh, the money I do make gets paid for the Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it's paying the Zoom bill, people. <laughs> uh, you know, and it's you know when you first start out, it's not about making money. If, no. if you can just get your name out there, absolutely. Or you know, uh, just start out. You know, when you break even, I mean. You've you've done a success, like me. I used to do stand up comedy as well, and uh, it, there's a reason it doesn't anymore. <laughs> I just don't have the time. That's why I don't do it anymore. I would love to uh -huh. do it. Uh, me, me and the uh, me and Eli's actually talked about me opening up for him, you know. But it's been a long, long time. Uh, you can't kill his career. But oh, uh, thanks, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, even if you like the the first. The first show I played, I did like 20 minutes. I got 20 bucks. Yeah, that's yep. not a lot of money, but that made me a paid comedian. So Hey, but you do the math. That's a dollar a minute. You've done an hour. That'd be 60 bucks an hour. That's pretty yeah. damn good money. Yeah. 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 I, I, dude, I mean, if you can make any money doing podcasting, man, it, it people don't realize how hard it is. I mean, on Anchor, I, I ain't getting many. On YouTube, the videos is so weird, man. Like, I don't understand YouTube. Like, I have a video. YouTube has a very weird set of rules and credentials to be monetized or what will get yeah. you demonetized and all yeah. that. I Absolutely. Like, that video I got 10,000 views with, if I did become monetized, I might get, like, two or three bucks from it. That's like, you know, and you mentioned Anchor. That's, that, that's what we use as well. I'm yeah. not even set up on the monetization on Anchor. Yeah. I have a... Uh, so what is your guys' secret to getting listens on Anchor? Because uh, there was – I look uh, – I'm in this group on Facebook that uh, is, like, promote your podcast and all that. Yeah. And there's yeah. a lot of people I mean, on there that talk about how can uh, they get their listens up on Anchor. I mean, me, I mean, dude, there's some that I get, like, three listens to. I don't know nothing about Anchor. <laughs> right. Well, basically, I mean, you know, Spotify owns Anchor. So – uh, the first couple of weeks I actually did the podcast. Like the first show got like a hundred views, and I, you know, and I had like people from like three different countries. I was tickled to death with that. At the level we're at now, I mean, it's just all Spotify, and uh, you know, just be sure to put a good description in in your in your episode and keywords that people search. Uh, you know, like you you mentioned the vaccine or COVID. I'm sure that searched a lot on Spotify. Or <laughs> Put that in there, you know, yeah. people's going to check that out. So, yeah. It's all about the hashtags. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That, that, that's what those statement. are, I don't have a blessed fucking clue, but it's all about the hashtags. Absolutely. That's all Goose is for today. I'm just the ugly mug that won't shut up on this. That's, that's <laughs> all I do. <laughs> yeah, on YouTube, I'm uh, – 
on YouTube, I know how to title stuff pretty good. That's my show is basically on YouTube. I mean, that's what I get most of my views from. I mean, yeah, that's that. I've watched your stuff on YouTube. Oh man, I definitely appreciate that, brother. Man, yeah, anybody absolutely. that watches my show, man, I mean, if you watch the uh, first couple episodes, and God bless you. <laughs> uh, any anytime I watch a video on YouTube and I like what they do, I understand where where it helps and whatnot. So I always like. And if I find myself coming back and watching the same thing a couple of times, I'll leave a comment because I know that helps them too. I always subscribe to anybody that catches my attention. So don't you worry. Oh, you already subscribed. I definitely appreciate that. You see, that's the problem with YouTube. It doesn't help. Does, yeah, huh? I'm subscribed to you guys. No, I was talking to the Dirty Dan. I am subscribed to, to us. Oh, I'm, just, I'm incognito I know, on man. YouTube. I know. I'm just joking. Just joking. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's what I don't understand with YouTube. They also don't tell you like uh, when people subscribe to you as well. They, they only show your numbers going up. So I don't like to be honest with you. I couldn't tell you who subscribed to <laughs> So just so you know, it shows that the the alerts are on for you. Definitely it, appreciate it, it that focuses. But I am subscribed to Seth Daily Podcast. Definitely All I have to do is type in SET and Seth Daily Podcast comes up because I do frequent <laughs> your channel. I appreciate that, brother, man. Definitely. And uh, G- Goose might want to see the evidence. <laughs> and I'm going to show him right now that, oh, look, I am also subscribed to Here to Chew Bubblegum with alerts on. I'm, asshole. I'm, I was just giving you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Talk Junkie at? <laughs> Talk Junkie, I listen to religiously and download every episode on Spotify. Oh, yeah. Dude, you know, that's my thing. I really ain't been posting too much on Spotify because I try to get the audio just on Patreon where uh, the people actually pay for the... uh... Here's the... I don't mean to interrupt you, but here's the thing. When you post on Anchor, Anchor, it automatically gets uploaded to Spotify. Yeah. Oh, it's on there. It's on iTunes now as well. It just now got approved for all that. It's just been like two or three days that it finally got approved. Now, for iTunes, um, I I use Podbean for that. For iTunes and iHeartRadio, yeah, you have to upload through Podbean. Yeah, somebody told me iHeartRadio is the uh, best one to use. It's you know, I, I know we're on there. I know we've got a lot of views, but to calculate how many, I would have to go to each individual one, and I I, I used to do that. I've not done that since we've been on iHeart or iTunes. Uh, and it, it's, I, I guess maybe March was the last time I did that. Uh, so it's been a long time ago. Yes. I mean, I don't look at my YouTube views either, to be honest with you. <laughs> what are you shaking your head at, asshole? Just you, buddy. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, man. It Okay, I got a question for both of you guys. Uh, th- you guys may not be, may not be able to answer this one because uh, the email might be so ridiculous. Okay. But uh, what is your guys' craziest email? You ain't got to say no name. What is the craziest one that you guys have got? I feel like the one I listened to was from, I believe, Aaron in Virginia, who had – it was when um the Spooky family was on with y'all. Uh, I believe it was like middle of June – uh, like low low 30s in the episodes um or it might have been no i think episode 27 that's sticking with me for some reason um it uh when he was talking about his grandfather and nasa and the moon landing issue adam adam adam, adam i'm not gonna say my last name from virginia <laughs> yeah yeah uh i would and he messaged back after that after because the spooky family actually filled in for us yeah, yeah, you guys were on vacation or in yeah. the back of – not in the back of their trunk. Yeah, yeah, right. And he wrote in, but he's not wrote in again. Um, probably the strangest one, and is if you go back – and this is something me and Dirty Dan will start back probably next month, first of November definitely, our midweek moment where we have a video show. We put it out every Wednesday. The strangest email and the weirdest one was from Stephen in uh, the U.K., and it was like an entire page, and Cronkite read the whole entire thing. <laughs> and I couldn't even tell you. I mean, because when I first pulled it up, I'm like, holy shit, this guy's <laughs> wrote a novel. 
And I started reading some of it and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm just going to print this off and give it to Cronkite. He can read this. So, and he did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. That is definitely, uh, that, that's definitely a very crazy story, man. So somebody, I couldn't imagine somebody writing a book. That's why I don't put my email out there. <laughs> I mean, oh, see, I, I'm all about that. Like we've had a couple long ones and, People are like, I'm sorry, I'm rambling, or you know, I thought about you wouldn't read it. Out there, though. Whatever anybody writes in, I will fucking read it. I don't care because that is them interacting with us. That is them showing that they listen, they want to know. And I will happily interact back because that that builds that relationship with your listeners. Yeah. Absolutely. And I just know that from Collins from my college radio show. Like that's why I got so popular because people were I had literally three phones set up, three landlines set up because I had people on hold that entire time. It was supposed to be a hard rock music station. I I hardly got, I met, I was lucky if I got to play four songs in a night. Wow. Just yeah, talking I mean, about whatever. So I will glad someone can write a 13 page fucking report, 0.5 spacing, Times New Roman, size 10. I will read that motherfucker if they want. <laughs> I don't care. I will, and I will edit it down. No. <laughs> but I do want to. I, I have thought about putting my email or creating an email just for the show so people can send stuff. I mean, uh, you honestly, be- you guys and the Spooky family are the uh, first people that have appeared around this area doing that. Well, you know, I mean, basically, the the format that Here to Chew Bubblegum is based off and goes by is just a ripoff of deadpit.com. I mean, you know, and you, you talk about podcasts. Uh, and they're 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 close. I'm not going to tell where they're at. They're in Eastern Kentucky, and they've been doing a horror podcast since like their first episode dropped December in 2005. So, and that was the first one, you know. And they're still uh, they took a break for a little bit, but they're back doing like a revival show, doing a bunch of stuff. And I've even had the creepy Kentucky and on before. And I told him I'm like, hey, you know. You did the uh, midweek uh, obliteration was their thing. I did the midweek moment. I said, I got the idea from you. The listener email got it from you, you know. And so, you know, I, I, I just took a formula that I loved, that I knew well. And, you know, and I'll tell you, you know, I copied it from them. And CK told me he copied it from a, from a uh, uh, wrestling podcast, I think, based out of Canada. So, you know. And. I just put the lotion on my skin so I don't get the hose again. So whatever's put in oh. front of me, I read. There you go. <laughs> but not 13 pages. Seth, if if you've never heard of Art Bell, definitely check out Art Bell on YouTube. I've heard of that name. Uh, I mean there's if you want a good good clip of Art Bell, I, I just I shared it with Goose the other night and he had already watched it. Uh, so there was an archaeologist named Jerry Freeman, and he actually snuck in and was in Area 51 for a week, unnoticed, undiscovered, wow. looking for the seventh inscription from the original 49ers because they went through the lake and the canyon that were there when they split uh part of them went through there and this the last inscription from that group that was known was in that canyon they didn't find it unfortunately but he called in art bell show so the last half of that youtube video it's like 47 minutes long or something like that it's a whole bunch of the interview from when he called into the art bell show and you can get a good feel for what that show was like it was supposed to be open for astronauts and whatnot, but he just said, fucking, I'm calling it anyway. And <laughs> you just hear our bell calling him crazy and the lunatic and 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 unbelievable that he he did that and got away with it. And like unfortunately, uh Jerry Freeman passed away prematurely from cancer, but like that that would have been a great guest to have on, even though he's an uh an archaeologist. Um that's that's the kind of thing that I I, I feel like I try and and help bring like energy wise their banter their back and forth <clears throat> um that that that's what makes the good show so yeah. listen and and like goose is a huge art bell fan i i like i can't say i'm as big a fan as him but i have a, a very large plethora of things i'm a fan of so listen to the art bell show is never disappointing no you know and you know my, my dad turned me on to art bell uh, like in 1990 and wow. I listened to Art Bell through the years and then last summer you know you had COVID let's not say that but uh, you know I the had, pandemic 
I had some downtime. So <laughs> people, people were posting Art Bell shows on YouTube and I started listening to them again. And so by September, I'm like, I want to do a podcast similar to Art Bell. I don't want to rip Art Bell off because there's no comparison. You know, he's like the king. But I want to do a podcast. And I started looking into some local stuff. And the first, the Paintsville thing came up. I'd never heard. I, I had heard of it years before, but I'd forgot about it. And I hadn't really dug into it. And I thought, hmm, I need a good name for a show. I and mean, I need a good name for a show. So I started thinking about, you know, Art Bell talked about UFOs and time travel. That was two big subjects. So I started thinking about time travel movies. And I thought, well, let me check and see if the Dominion, hey, or uh, Dominion uh, domain, hey, wait a minute, Doc, is available. And it was. And again, this goes back to me talking to the creepy Kentuckian and just asking his advice. And he's like, if you can get the URL that you want, you know, the, the dot com name, make sure you can get the social media names as well. If you can't, it's not worth it. So, hey, wait a minute, Doc. There was a YouTube page, maybe in a Twitter page that somebody already had. So I thought, well, I've got to think of something else. So some more days go by, and I came up with a bright idea, bright idea of UFOOFU.com. That's just UFO spelled frontwards and then backwards. But that sounded kind of perverted like a different site, you know. Hey, what's your <laughs> website? It's UFO OFU. Meetspin.com. So, so then I was I was thinking about, you know, uh, alien movies and this and that, and the famous line from Roddy Piper, I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of <laughs> bubble gum. And I'm like, here to chew bubble gum. So I, I, so I searched it. There was no dot com. I searched off social media. None. So I snatched it up instantly in like 20 minutes, all of them. You know, even, even before I bought the dot com, I got the social medias first because if I'd went and got, went back to get the dot com and it was taken, I would have went with dot net or dot org or whatever. But I got the social medias first and then I bought the website. That's awesome, man. And that's how we came up with the name for the show. And then That's October 14th was the first midweek moment, and October 18th was the first episode. Yes, it was. Really? Yes, it was. Yep. You know, in the first couple episodes, I was by myself. You know, I was just reading stuff. I had an interview with a friend of mine, Luke Fugit from Knott County, one of the most brilliant guys I've ever met. My name sounds familiar. What is he I doing? Mean, um, he actually works traffic control right now, but he's he uh, uh, lives up uh, by Double Quick. Oh yeah. yeah, so but he's highly intelligent. Anything you can think of, he can make it. You know. Well, and we're gonna have him back on soon, right? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Man, that's awesome. Definitely uh that you're interviewing local people. Really, me, you, Eli, and uh the spooky family, talk junkie. Uh us five podcasts as well, down the hall or two. <laughs> they do a great job as well. All of us really do a lot with uh, interviewing local Eastern Kentucky people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, and it's about getting the word out, you know, because if one of us make it, we all make it, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, if that's you, hopefully by, you know, us having you on the show in the past and doing this, that, that you know, that will get us some, some kicks up, you know. Yeah. If Justin makes it the same thing. If I make it, I can guarantee you guys I will do everything in my power to make sure you make it too because that's how I was raised. Absolutely. You know? Man, I mean, that's just being humble, brother. If I make it, everybody makes it, man. I mean, there's – my podcast is uh, way better than what it was. I mean, obviously, when I first started, it wasn't even supposed to even be a YouTube show. It was just supposed to be a page. It, Man, my, you're, you know the crazy story I told oh, you. Yeah. This yeah. wasn't even supposed to even be a podcast, man. Well, this wasn't you know, even supposed to be anything. <laughs> should uh, we we go ahead and tell a little secret on here, Dirty Dan? Yeah, fuck it. Let it fly. Okay. Uh, and we've been secretly saying that, you know, major platform coming soon. Um, our ultimate goal, and we actually have a demo submitted, and it's been submitted for uh, – 
two and a half months. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's been submitted for quite a while. Uh, and we have a demo that's been submitted to Sirius Satellite Radio. And, uh, you know, this goes back to me acting in independent films, doing stand-up comedy. Oh, you know, acting? I did have an agent. Thank you. you know, I, I played a police officer. It was it was really hard because I worked in a cookie factory all my life. <laughs> but, uh, you know, back in the day when I was doing those things, I did have a manager from Nashville. And uh, he hooked me up because Sirius is big in Nashville. Nashville is like five hours away from us. So there has been a demo sent. Um, there was a recommendation made about three weeks after the demo was sent for us to apply to get on Pandora, to get our show on Pandora. Now, you can't just go on and post a show on Pandora. It has to be wow. reviewed. To ver it's about a six to eight-week process. Wow. Um, we have made it through. There's like four different stages. We've made it through three. Hopefully, in the next two to three weeks, we should hear something. Uh, if we don't get on Sirius right now, we get on Pandora, you know, we're just going to keep trucking away. You know, just for them to reach back to us and say, hey, try to submit this to Pandora as well. That's a huge honor, you know. Yeah. So. That's awesome, man. Definitely congratulations on uh, being you. on Pandora, man. That definitely uh, gets more eyes on the Eastern Kentucky yeah. podcast. Well, that gets more eyes on your guys' podcast. It helps everybody, man. And, uh, you know, we're not on Pandora yet, but it's looking good. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's not a bad thing, definitely not. And, you know, we we uh, broke that news here on your podcast because nobody, you know, and in, in the public that went behind the scenes didn't didn't know that. So, so Seth, you got to hear it first. You got an exclusive. <laughs> an exclusive. And you got uh, an definitely appreciate that. Definitely, man. If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna step away for a few minutes to go put my daughter down for bed. And then I will happily bring my big old ass back on here and, and get back in with you guys. <laughs> Absolutely, man. You're fine. All right. I'll be back with you. Absolutely, You man. can stare at the eye candy behind me for a meantime. <laughs> There's a picture of Ghost, Puff, and Dirty Dan on a poster. Here to chew bubblegum. Everybody, uh, well, you got a bar on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, people can't because uh, <laughs> I was about to say people yeah. can uh, get the QR code. <laughs> yeah well you can actually uh i think i've got the qr code on the website i'm not really sure or right. um uh, yeah i just here to chewbubblegum.com i mean it's simple now the site's not been updated since like the first part of july because i am the webmaster uh it's not hard to do it's just a matter of just sitting down and doing Having it time for you. yeah so yeah man. Uh, you know, because with work and, and the shows, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it gets a little hectic sometimes. Like, you yeah. might have to talk to you. I do not – I mean, I would love to do a po – I would love to do this for a living. But to do a podcast like you do every single day, I don't know if I could do that, man. I mean, <laughs> you know, I can come in and, and talk about some aliens and time travel and stuff like that. But to – you know, I, I, I just don't know if I could do that. I think you it's – I think it's uh all about it's it's not really about me honestly, brother. Uh, I mean, why if if people was just hearing me, they would uh they would they would want to listen. It's just the amazing guests like you guys, uh, Justin Perkins, Mike Goldberg, Joe Tedai, uh, Jody Cook, who's a big guy in the dogman world, uh, Earl, who's Earl uh, Mullins, mm -hmm. who's a uh, regular here on the podcast, and then uh you got. Oh, shout out to Harvey Average. Me and him do a weekly football show on Patreon exclusive, man. So, I mean. Uh, didn't you post, too, you're going to do a wrestling podcast once a week? Yeah, starting in November. And, uh, honestly, I probably should make my first guest kid cash because he's the only WB guy I know. <laughs> are you, no, are you going to talk about new school wrestling? Because I have no clue. All school wrestling, man. That's uh, – Kid Cash is definitely – uh. did you listen to the interview with him? He talked. Yeah, talk yeah. about uh, his experience with Ric Flair and uh, stuff with like Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> oh. uh, you know, when you talk about wrestling, I'm old school. I'm back NWA, the yeah. CWA yeah. from Memphis. You know, Jerry yeah. Lawler's Federation. Absolutely, uh, man. We can have you on the wrestling show if you want to talk about wrestling. 
I mean, I'm 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 definitely up to talk about old school wrestling. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, dude, I can get Kid Cash on your show if you want him on. So, well, yeah, we'll definitely take you up on that. Uh, <laughs> you know, we may not talk much wrestling when he's on here at Chew Bubble Gum, but we'll talk about aliens and time travel and you know, shit that like guy, that. That guy can talk about anything, man. He is just uh, you get like you the guy said with Justin Perkins, you give him a topic, he just talks about it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and and Justin's very blessed to be able to do that because I mean, I mean, I, I, like I'm serious, and I think I said earlier you could take a pile of trash and make it interesting. I mean, <laughs> you know, and then that's no disrespect. I mean, it it it's it's just a gift he's got that he just yeah. he can take a rock, you know, and make it sound <laughs> interesting to me. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, uh, I believe Chris Long's like that as well. If you hear that guy's voice, man, yeah, yeah, that that, that guy has the that guy has a voice up there with Mike Goldberg, like like mm -hmm. announcing, like him and Mike Goldberg are pretty close. I know that uh, a lot of people don't know here in Eastern Kentucky, we got some talent. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I think Chris used to work at Q95. Uh, yeah, yeah, for a he long did. time. Yeah. You know, actually, and, he still does their. Uh, like, I guess you go like you are listening to Q ninety five. I think oh, he still man. does that. Eastern Kentucky's best. Yeah, I think I think Eastern. he still does yeah. that. Yeah, they uh, you know, Dirty Dan was talking about he had a college radio show. You know, I uh, didn't have a college radio show, but I did too. Actually, on the station in Hyman back in the mid nineties, it was called uh, called Cruising with Guzlin was the name of my show. <laughs> I didn't come up with a name. Actually, the guy that does the voiceovers. For here to chew bubble gum, Carlin uh, Dixon came up with that name, yeah. and uh, you know, even uh, here's a little side bet or a side thing: the uh, Beavis and Butthead sound drop. <laughs> you know, back in the '90s, he actually, you know, he's like, "You're listening to Cruising McGoozlin. Give the guy a break. He's not that bright." That was from you know my radio days. The yeah. part about Abe Lincoln that was from my, then from my radio days, and Carlin come up with them all of himself. And then when I told him I want, I needed him to do some uh, teasers and promos for me, and I put those two in there. I mean, it was just like going back in time, you know. So Trevor Huff, man, that's another guy. Honestly, listen, Trevor Huff, going like I was going to uh, when while I was in high school, I would listen to uh, Trevor Huff in the car all the time on car rides in the morning and stuff, and it was like. Man, that's why I've honestly wanted my podcast on the radio because people like you guys and Trevor Huff. I mean, Trevor Huff was – Trevor Huff is a legend here in Knock County. Yeah, yeah, he is. And uh, he was supposed to be on the show a few weeks ago, and uh, he had something happen last minute. But we're definitely going to have him on. He's actually invited me on because uh, I think he's working midday now uh, at the station there. I'm in WKCB 107.1, the Killer Bee. You can also hear here to chew bubble gum on that station every Monday <laughs> at 10 p.m. Uh, but he's invited me on Mondays. during the day. Uh, what's that? Monday nights, right? Yes, Monday nights, 10 p.m. Absolutely. Uh, you can hear us on WXLR Sunday nights, 10 p.m. Uh, that's 104.9 and Harold Pikeful. They got uh, an app, right? Yes, they do have an app. That's on the website. Uh, we'll have a station coming on in a couple of weeks from Leslie County. Uh, WWBZ, I think they're, I don't know the frequency. I think it's 102.5 or 7. Is that WZQQ or? No, WWBZ. Oh. But, and uh, then we have a station coming on the 1st of October in Ashland, uh, X-Rock. X so, you know, we've, we've definitely been blessed. Yeah. And I may call into Trevor soon. Uh, like I said, he told me, invited me. You know, a couple of weeks ago, and I've just not, just not had time to, yeah. to call in. So he's a good dude, and man, uh, that would be definitely be a good interview for you guys for sure, man. He's a, uh, I mean, dude, that guy right there has inspired me a lot. And uh, man, honestly, it can be a little discouraging when you uh, the radio station say no to you and stuff. Well, don't, don't don't get discouraged, you know, because <laughs> you just keep plugging away. Oh you know, yeah, there's Absolutely. the. Have you ever heard of the uh, twenty one rule? Have you ever heard that? Are you familiar with that? Uh oh. -uh. For every time you ask the same thing and somebody tells you no, every 21st time, 
on the 21st time, you'll get a yes. So you just got to keep plugging away and trying. Absolutely, man. Yeah. There's been a there's a radio station that is still reviewing the podcast and stuff, man. But uh, doesn't look too promising. I know they're working on sports and stuff. They said, but uh, with well, you, the, have to, you have to message me who they are, and I'll see uh, if I know anybody there or anything. So. <laughs> man, I would love to be on WXLR or any of them other stations, man. I mean, them radio stations. First off, WXLR plays some. Hell of oh, good music. Yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yeah, dude. WXLR plays some good music. Yep, that's my kind of music. Dirty Dan, why do you look sad? Because I've come back to chew more bubblegum and kick ass. I'm still out of fucking gum. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, man, definitely uh, definitely the biggest goal is definitely be on the radio. And, uh, I mean, you guys definitely uh, – you, you talk about how I do a weekly show. Man, you guys in the spooky family, Talk Junkie, Joe Rogan, Joey Diaz, you guys inspire me to do this every day to try mm-hmm. to uh, Thank you. get better. Thank you very much, man. And, you know uh, – well, This uh, ain't no competition. Everybody should be – Dude, the, why can't the podcast all just be family, bro? Because we're from yeah. the same place, man. Yeah, I mean, I should totally be able to just call Joe Rogan up whenever the fuck I want to and talk to him. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Oh, no, I was talking about people in Eastern Kentucky. <laughs> well, I'm no, not in Eastern Kentucky, so, all right, well, there you go. I'm, you're, I'm you're, Kentucky. <laughs> you're close enough. Yeah, you're Joe, Kentucky. they're making fun of me again. <laughs> yeah, that would Joe, be cool knowing Joe Rogan, though. Joe said, take your horse train, uh, tr- uh, tranks and be quiet. Oh, For yeah, your, I remember that. Yeah. So, whatever it is. <laughs> they, uh, but thank you very much, Seth, for having us on. Uh, I got one piece of advice for you for your radio show. If you want to get on the radio, or you do get on the radio, I'll give you an example. Don't be like my wife and get really fucking good at and believe in your own damn doubt because otherwise, you will have a hell of a time with the FCCA. What would you say? Hey, would- exactly. I bleep yeah. myself out. I muted myself for the explicit words that you can't say on there. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Just get into a habit because that is the easiest, quickest, fastest, worst way to get in trouble real quick. Yeah. What was that? We were we, we, we were uh, recording a radio show a couple weeks ago. And what was it? It was – It was, it was uh, about making her wet. I was like, yeah. that's nothing new. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, he can say that, but I can't cuss. I said, well – I'm going to mark that down. I have to edit that out. So, you know. <laughs> she, she, wrote a, she wrote a sticky note and put it on her head that says, do not cuss. Or no swear words. Don't yeah. use swear words. Oh, is she guys your uh, co-host as well? Uh, so yeah. yeah. She, Rebecca, she, she comes on a lot, yeah. Rebecca is actually how Goose and I got connected because I had been listening to them unbeknownst to her because she never listens to what i say when it comes to anything on music or radio shows goose sees her on tiktok reaches out to her and she goes guy from here to chew bubblegum i'm like what and she's like yeah this guy like wants me to come on a podcast i'm like you need to listen to their shit right now like it's all about conspiracy theories and ufos and 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 anything and everything related to that she's like oh I guess I'll check him out. I think she's honestly listened to like maybe 45 minutes total of an episode. And that's because I've made her listen to it. Um, she, she just doesn't, it's not her thing. And I get it. I respect it. Whatever. She has her own thing. I like the podcast and the talk shows. I'm a huge history buff. So like this, this is my forte. Um, and because of her introducing us and then she was, and she had like 110,000 followers on TikTok at one point. Well, so like she would go live and stuff when we do oh, the radio show or the podcast. Off? Yeah, yeah, they kicked her off. Yeah, are you kidding yeah. me? No. So I got I got booted May thirteenth. Um, I come home from work, and she wanted me to look at something, so I got to open up and it said your IP address has been blocked from accessing this app. Wow. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, <laughs> all I ever posted was car and truck stuff because by damn a diesel mechanic, and I have a Volkswagen TDI. It's a diesel gate car and it's an actual German car. And the EPA can go fuck themselves, EPA. Um, <laughs> and I removed the emissions device from my car 
which was already an emission scandal, Dieselgate back in 2015. Um, and I get 64.7 miles to the gallon. Well, my cruise control said it 93 miles an hour. Okay. Tell me how that is not fucking efficient. I can go 1200 miles on one tank of fuel. All right. Banned. Done. Boom. Cats out of the bag. Nope. Can't have that. So I said, fuck it. I'm going to take a break from TikTok for a while. And then Rebecca needed my help. I was tired of getting sent things from Goose and her and everybody in our Telegram. I said, fuck it. I download, I had to download it or purchase a VPN so that I could get back on the TikTok. And I do have a confession to make. Um, I do work for the EPA. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> You might know, uh, but you can't catch me. I have a shirt that even says it. I might be ugly, but my car's fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But uh, so, yeah, it's she got she got banned. Uh, it started like what, like four days ago, Goose, or three days ago, something like that. Uh, yeah, like three days ago. It was we, this week. Yeah, um, yeah we oh, actually did a video. We'll be posting uh, probably pretty soon probably tomorrow about it so she's always been on with us and since um we kind of had that spot to fill um you know she's she is our in-house guest as i like to call it yeah yeah pup pup is at the animal shelter sadly why do you just nobody wants to adopt him i don't know but i uh i call her our in-house guest she's our she's our eye candy um she's also the ear candy Goose is goose, and I'm just the dirty prick in the background. So that's <laughs> really, but, uh, I'm dirty Dan, the barbecue man. It, it is what it is. Dirty Dan, the barbecue man. Goose, how do you come up with these names, by the way, man? Uh, <laughs> do you remember how you gave me mine? Oh, yeah, because you're talking about barbecue. <laughs> no. So I got his number, and I, I smoked a brisket that day, and I sent it to him. And he goes, You are the man, dirty Dan. Dirty Dan, the barbecue man. I was like, I always say, once you put my meat in your mouth, you won't want anyone else's. And he goes, Dirty Dan, barbecue man, your meat can't be beat. I'm like, that would be good on the napkins and cups at my restaurant. (laughs) And make sure his number's not being shown, but that's his uh, profile picture on my, it's a picture of a piece of meat. I don't think you can see it. No. I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pull up the picture I sent him. There we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Well, uh, shit, sorry, Dirty Dan. <laughs> I don't have you listening to this Dirty Dan on your phone. So, your real name's out there. Oh, I don't give a shit. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, wow, dude. Hell yeah. And one thing I don't do, which I only found this out about six months ago, and it absolutely fucking tore me apart and broke my heart. I did not know that all those competitive and, and professional smokers out there, all their seasoning, their crust, like when you see that nice big black piece of meat, it started out that way. They literally put it on in the beginning like that. That is a brisket that did not get wrapped at all, spent 11 and a half hours on the smoker, came up to 203 degrees internal temp by itself. I didn't have to do anything that all these competition guys say they have to. My meat never stalled out at 156 degrees. It just, it stayed there for about an hour and I watched the one end start coming up and it just literally, it stalled at 203 degrees, which is the perfect temperature. Was it Pulled juicy it out. when you cut into it? Was it juicy? Come on, <laughs> Goose. I don't have dry meat. <laughs> I, I see a doctor for that, all right? <laughs> but 90 90 no, percent of that was the juice from the brisket and the barbecue sauce was just on top that looks good it That's just totally falls good. apart my meat is so tender it just falls apart in your mouth like an m&m your mouth not your hands <laughs> melts in your mouth not your hands <laughs> i believe i heard that in a rap song before <laughs> <laughs> but uh you guys uh have a uh Obviously, I'm going to be on your show this Sunday. Who, who you yeah. guys got coming out on the radio uh, this Sunday night? Well, uh, let's see. 
the radio show that will be playing this Sunday night, we actually recorded it last week. Um, I don't have the format in front of me, and I apologize. It's been a long, long week. <laughs> so, because I thought, you know, we were going to do it. Um, yeah. We have uh, Seth coming on. No, no, yeah. We're, he's asking about last week. Oh, that was Justin Perkins. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Justin Perkins sets him with us, and we play a Justin clip. Justin Perkins, a talk junkie. And we, and we, and we play a clip from uh, episode 45 and 46 of the Roundtable Show. And then I, I started reading an article that we had, I had saved um, about the UFO encounters. And uh, suddenly we were at 41 minutes and we're like, oh, shit, we still got to add stuff in. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but this Sunday when we record, we'll be recording at 6 p.m. Uh, so we have a special guest with us. Seth, you'll be there with us. Uh, giving your opinion on the stories and emails <laughs> and all the silliness that we still <laughs> Silliousness, whatever how you say it. Uh, and I'm sure we'll probably be talking about meat at some point. <laughs> yeah. So man. I I want to read uh I want to read this for the radio show. Okay. I don't know if it's coming across backwards or not. It's just Rebecca texting us, please. Oh, okay. It says researchers reveal key discovery in Bermuda Triangle. Wreckage has a story to tell. Okay. okay. So that's that's going to be my one story. And then if time permits, I have a story about what not to do at airports. And that's saying, don't say you have a bomb in your baggage because you missed your flight. I don't know if you all have seen that headline, but a, a, a lady in a, a lady in Chicago, I believe it was, checked her bag, bag got on the plane, but she took her time lollygagging to the terminal and said, oh, that plane can't go. That's my flight. I have a bomb in my bag. And so they diverted the flight back to the gate. Everything was searched. She didn't have anything. She wound up going to jail. So still missed a flight. Uh, just had the, the great Justin Perkins message me as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Tell him I say hi. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, but uh, thank you very much, Seth. I'm going to have to scoot here in just a little Absolutely, bit. Absolutely, man. Definitely uh, be on the lookout for uh, this Sunday at 10 p.m. on WXLR. It's also their podcast on Spotify, WKCB, every Monday at 10 p.m. Yep, yep. And then uh, next week, our episode will be up. In, uh, and obviously tomorrow night we'll be at the concert. <laughs> Definitely and, uh, here's, our, here's my little shameless plug. Uh, Goose and I are talking about this. Coming to you soon on Here to Chew Bubblegum will be a little dad joke segment of all of our bad dad jokes. So come out for a terribly good laugh. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man, everybody uh, definitely want to thank the uh, host of Here to True Bubble Gum for being on. And uh, yeah, thank man, you for the invite. Absolutely, man. They'll be on uh, hopefully in October. I definitely plan on having you guys on it. over on in october definitely yeah october. yeah definitely just let us know uh, well and something else something else big for us in october um uh seth i don't know if you've listened to our plug at the end but if you want a youtube adventures with purpose uh we will be meeting up with those guys in the beginning of october because they're coming to kentucky for a couple cases so oh wow that's awesome definitely definitely be on the lookout for that in october for sure and uh yeah man check out their show on spotify wxlr wkcb uh, they're on all here to bubblegum.com. Yeah, yep. here to bubblegum.com. <laughs> Everywhere you can find podcasts. And uh, yeah, man, I want to thank them for being on. And uh, everybody have a good night. And uh, go. Bye.